Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to be building a program for an alarm inside a bank vault. Now to get started, we're going to create a new Sam Blockly project, and we're going to title the project in the top left hand corner, Bank Vault Alarm. And now we're ready to build our program on our workspace. So first we have to think about what inputs and outputs occur within a bank vault in an alarm when somebody who's not supposed to get into it gets into it. So we're going to go to devices and we're going to be using a light sensor and a buzzer for this program. So I'm going to click buzzer and for the purposes of the video, I'm going to be using the SAM virtual blocks. So there's my virtual buzzer that I just toggled on. But if you do have the physical blocks, I would encourage you to connect and pair those blocks. I'm then going to add another device and find that light sensor block. There it is. And make sure that the virtual light sensor is also toggled on. Now I'm ready to build my system. So I'm going to close the devices tab just to free up some workspace over here. I'm going to start out by using the light sensor to start this program or initiate the alarm. So I'm going to go to light sensor and I'm going to go to events. And I'm going to drag and drop a when light sensor value changes block onto the workspace. Now I need to fill in what's going to happen if the light sensor value changes. So I'm going to go to logic and I'm going to drag an if do else block and snap it beneath when light sensor value changes. I need to fill in this if statement and I'm going to do that by dragging and dropping the equal to block and snapping it in. But I need to manipulate this statement to say that when the bank is just functioning normally at a certain light level that everything's okay. But if it would read either a higher or a lower light level then that would initiate the alarm within the bank if someone was not supposed to be in there. So I'm going to set, use the drop down menu to set my inequality symbol to greater than. And I'm going to go into the light sensor values because I want the program to grab the actual light sensor reading. And that's what's going to trigger the alarm system. So right now my program is saying that when the light sensor value changes, if that light sensor value is greater than something, then my program will do something. So now I need to define, to define that value. So I'm going to go into math. I'm going to drag and drop that number block. And I'm going to set it equal to 45. After this video, you're going to get a chance to respond and think about why we set it equal to 45 and ultimately how this program actually simulates a bank vault alarm. From here, we're going to go to loops. I'm going to drag and drop a repeat forever do block and snap it into this do portion of the if do else. So essentially, I'm telling my program that within this portion of the, the code, that it's going to repeat whatever I plug in here forever and ever and ever. So now I have to tell my system what it's going to repeat and essentially it's going to repeat the alarm. So now if I'm going to build a program for the alarm, I'm going to go to the buzzer. I'm going to take a look at what the buzzer can do. So the buzzer can change different volumes. It can change different pitches. It can also change uh, different colors because there's an LED within the block. And so I'm going to utilize the pitch first. So I'm going to drag and drop the set buzzer pitch and snap it in to the repeat forever. I'm going to set this pitch to a high pitch. If you think about an alarm, it's high pitched. It is urgent. Somebody needs to respond. So I'm going to set it equal to 90. Now I'm going to tell my program how long I want that buzzer to stay on. So I'm going to go to general and I'm going to use a wait for block to do that. Rather than two seconds, that is way too long. I want to have it an urgent alarm. I'm going to change it to half a second and I just type that value in. Next, I need to tell the buzzer to turn off at some point if it's repeating forever and ever or it's just gonna stay at that one pitch. 
So I'm going to go into buzzer actions and drag and drop a clear buzzer beneath the weight block. The next step is I want my alarm to have a color. So I'm going to go into the buzzer actions and I'm going to use the set buzzer color too so that I can have a color along with my alarm system. I'm going to keep the color red because I think it kind of increases the urgency of the situation. And then I need to tell my system again how long that buzzer color would stay on for. And I'm going to just keep it consistent and duplicate by right clicking or double clicking on the block I want to duplicate and then just snapping it beneath. So that concludes the alarm. So my alarm is within the repeat forever and I should have a high pitched sound and a red color for the buzzer block. Now the last step is to finish this logic. Because right now we have the first part set up, but if a light sensor value is not greater than 45, what is going to happen within this system? And I need to define that. So it's going to be a different output, and I'm going to utilize the buzzer color to signal that, hey, everything's all right, the alarm has not been signaled. So I'm going to go to actions, and I'm going to drag and drop a set buzzer color too, and snap it into the else. Now, I'm not going to use red because that would signal that the alarm was triggered, but instead I'm going to use green to say, hey, everything is okay within the bank vault. No errors, no one trying to break in. So the last step here is to test the program. Anytime you're using virtual blocks, remember to open up your devices tab so that you can see visually what's happening as you run and test your program. And now I'm going to click run and we should test it out. So when the light sensor value changes, there you have it. And I'm going to stop. Let's run it again. And there is the green that everything's okay, but once it passes at 45, the alarm is triggered. And there you have it.